Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that a few people, actually several people have asked me in our soundproofing community, and that is, how do you soundproof a double wall system when you have an exterior wall? Because you can't put two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the exterior of a building, it would get soggy, wet, and deteriorate, and that would never work. So what do you do? So in this lesson, I'm gonna be talking about exactly what to do and how to think through it so that you can figure out that solution in your own soundproof studio build. Before I go jump into this one, uh, as always, I have my free soundproofing workshop, which is available for you right away at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. You can sign up right away and watch this and it'll go in detail into all of the ways you need to think through your soundproof studio design. Highly recommend it if you're on this journey of building a soundproof soundproof home recording studio or a soundproof room in general for any of those who are doing home theaters or things like that. All right, so now let's jump into this lesson on how to soundproof those exterior walls. Okay, I'm gonna start with just a quick overview of the double wall construction because it will then help us, uh, help me explain the theory and why I'm doing this for the exterior walls. So with a simple double wall construction, you can look at this diagram. I've showed it many times before and maybe you've seen something similar like this on the internet, which is to the far right of this diagram, you can see that our STC 63, which is the best wall rating we can get in this series of walls has two walls spaced at least one inch apart, and on one side of the wall is two layers of drywall, and on the other side of the wall is two layers of drywall with insulation in the middle. Now, the problem is that if one of those walls needs to be exterior facing in the elements of the outdoors, you can't use drywall. So this catches a lot of people off guard. They're like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And there's not enough information on the internet about this. So hopefully this video will help you with that. So this leads me to my second point, which is, well, what do we do? So the key with soundproofing exterior walls is to think about the basics of soundproofing, which comes back to mass. And mass is really the essence of why we use two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. You could use anything, like any building material would work. The only reason we use 5 8 drywall is because one drywall is a common construction material used in walls and in building walls. And second, because it's cheap, fairly cheap to use. You know, we could use stone or we could use brick or we could use uh, sheet metal. Or we could use lead. We could use a million items, but they would be more expensive than drywall and harder to work with. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the 5 8 inch drywall has mass. It's way more heavy, has more mass than other forms of drywall, especially obviously the lightweight drywall that's used to help uh, construction workers install drywall because heavy drywall is harder to install. So for our purposes, that's why we use 5 8 inch drywall. Now on your outside wall, all we need to do is match the mass of our inside wall. So let's do some quick, easy math. So when you go to the Home Depot website, it'll show you that 5 8 inch drywall has a weight of 2.2 pounds per square foot. Now, if you want to be super serious, you could always measure your 5 8 inch drywall just to double check, but for me, that's good enough. 2.2 pounds per square foot. If we double that, we get 4.4 pounds per square foot with two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. Great, so we know that a square foot on our inside wall is 4.4 pounds per square foot. All we need to do is then match two materials on the outside wall that will have that same weight. Um, so, and it doesn't even have to be two materials. You could use one material if you wanted to, as long as it got 4.4 pounds per square foot on your outside wall. So now let's take a look at a real world example. Let's look at my studio build, for example, to see what I did and how this all works. Because a lot of you have watched my videos and, and been like, there's no way your outside wall is soundproof. Like, what is going on? How is this possible? Um, but I'm going to explain to you how it is possible and why it does work and why it is soundproof. So my outside walls were built with 9 16 inch sheathing. This is a nominal uh, width of 5 eighths of an inch. Now I did some research and I found on one website that I'm trusting and I have the sources linked in the article on my blog, uh, but that says that on average 5 eighths inch sheathing should weigh 2.07 pounds per square foot. 
So we're like, okay, we're a little shy of that 2.2 pounds, but we're close. But then I added hardy plank siding. And hardy plank is essentially a um, concrete-based material. So it has some serious weight and heft to it. And it's a great building material for exterior siding because it also lasts a long time and can weather the elements. Now, hardy plank siding, according to another website that I found, just a quick Google search, again, have the link to my research and my notes. I try to leave a paper trail with my work cited on all of this. Um, is going to be 2.3 pounds per square foot. Now, when we add those two weights together, we get 4.37 pounds per square foot, which is just shy of 4.4 pounds per square foot. So awesome job. This might explain why my studio is soundproof and it worked out well, is that my mass on both sides works equally. They roughly equal each other, so I don't have a weak point there. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was building my studio, I didn't think about any of this, which is why I'm here on this channel and working as a consultant to help people build studios and think through these things that I completely missed. And in that case, I got really lucky. Um, I think my contractor maybe was thinking about it, but we really were not thinking about the exterior wall as much as we were thinking about the interior wall. So matching that weight is important. You can do exactly what I did and you'll be fine. Five eighths inch sheathing, hardy plank siding, you're good to go. If you're using a concrete block structure, you're probably going to have even more mass, you know, fill the concrete blocks with, with sand is what I recommend, but you could even fill them with mortar. Either way, you're going to have a lot of mass in there and it's going to be great. You could use brick, you could use stone, anything. You just need to make sure and figure out that you're at least hitting that 4.4 pounds per square foot to match your inside wall. Now, some of you are going, Wilson, what about green glue? Green glue! And uh, green glue is like the bane of my existence these days. Um, and I joke about it because people obsess over this little sticky compound that has kind of like taken over the internet. Um, if you use green glue, I use green glue in my studio. I recommend it. If you have the budget, I think it works. I would use it again on a studio if I built another one. And if you wanted to be, you know, really on top of it, you could put green glue in between the sheathing and the hardy plank. It's kind of mess. It's going to cost more. It's all this stuff. I didn't do it on my studio. I got great results. I'm happy with them. But to be you know, scientific about this, if you have one wall that's 4.4 pounds with green glue in the middle, another wall that's 4.4 pounds with green glue in the middle, you should technically have a double wall system that's equal on both sides. Another option is to forego the green glue on the outside wall and try to make up for what the green glue is potentially doing on your inside wall with more mass on the outside. Now, there is some debate out there on the internet of what green glue actually does. You can look at transmission loss graphs that show that green glue potentially, you know, helps in the low end and helps overall in the high end as well, but significantly in the low end. And so adding more mass to your outside wall would potentially help soundproof and increase the transmission loss of your outside wall as well. How much, how many pounds? Well, that's kind of up for debate. Uh, I know Roger Weiss at one point said that green glue is kind of like four pounds of five eighths inch dry, or sorry, four layers of five eighths inch drywall. It has the same capability as that. However, he has since pulled that back and there's this whole controversy where he says they changed the, con the ingredient in green glue and he's not sure if his testing is still legitimate or not. And so that's all up for debate in some circles. Um, all that said, if you want to try to match your green glue wall, I recommend either putting green glue on the outside wall or just trying to add more mass to try to equal it out. How much mass, you know, how much can you afford? I think it always comes down to budget, especially with these home studio builds. Lastly, you might have a question. You might say, hey, Wilson, what about lightweight walls? Now, this is a totally legitimate and common problem out there in our soundproofing community. For example, we just finished a soundproof studio build here in Nashville where we built a soundproof studio inside of a prefabricated shed. Now, those prefabricated sheds are cheaper because the materials are usually cheaper as well and not as high end. So the outside sheathing of a prefabricated shed is usually very thin, a uh, very thin type of plywood, and it's not going to have much mass. So what we did is we just beefed up the inside of those exterior walls with 5 eighths inch drywall in all the bays of that project. And it actually helped out a lot. You know, this added mass to that exterior wall. And then we put two layers of 5 eighths inch drywall on the interior wall. And it was kind of like having two similar mass walls side by side. 
you do the best you can. You could also add mass if possible to the exterior of your outside structure. And this could come in the form of more plywood, more sheathing, uh, metal, brick, concrete, stone, anything you can do to your outside wall to increase the mass is gonna, uh, you know, it's gonna help with your soundproofing uh, overall. So overall, I don't want you guys out there to, you know, obsess over this. It's one of those things where the science is in the math of, of the mass. So if we can calculate mass, whether it's in pounds or kilograms, um, and compare it to our inside wall design, whether you're doing 5 8 inch drywall, plaster, stone, brick, you name it, if you give me any material, I'll just calculate the weight, the mass of that material. I'll try to balance it on both walls. And, and that's what I would do for my consulting clients. So you can do that as well on your own um, once you just get the mass and the weights for your materials being used. And lastly, you know, green glue, mass loaded vinyl. I'm not like a huge proponent either way with either of those. I think my philosophy has leaned towards mass, just using people have joked on our, our channel calling me the drywall mafia because I'm like so pro drywall that I must be part of a drywall mafia, which I think is hilarious. But yeah, you know, I just don't care that much either way. If you have the budget, yeah, let's use green glue. It, I don't think it can hurt. If you're on a super tight budget, don't use green glue, don't use MLV, use drywall calculate your mass, build your walls with as much mass as you can afford, and start making music. The goal is to make music, not to obsess over how to build a studio. With that said, I hope I can help you with less obsession by checking out my free soundproofing workshop. This is again available at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop workshop. I hope you all have enjoyed this uh, lesson and I hope it's cleared up some things for you and uh, good luck with designing and building your soundproof studio. I wish you all the best of luck and uh, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate the little, little community we've built here on the internet and it's been so much fun teaching you all uh, how to build your dream studios. All right, until next week, I'll see you all later.